Okay, so welcome to the channel. This week's video, uh, being it's a Wednesday video, is about the Lumix S5 Mark II. And I'm actually out in my workplace. Now, I wouldn't normally do this. It's just that the uh, my work has asked me to uh, to do some video and some pictures and everything. And I've got permission uh, to be able to use this, uh, this footage as video for my YouTube channel um, because they're not actually paying me to do this. Uh, but they've asked me to do it anyway. So, what I'm uh, just going to go through today really just how good this uh, Lumix X5 II is um, just in the workplace how rugged it is um, I've done lots and lots of testing with this now I've uh, done lots and lots of work related um, uh, pictures with it and video um, I mixed it in with drone footage and things for different clients um, but this time like I say I'm doing this um, for free for a client and um, in exchange for being able to use a video on YouTube and just going through what it is so what I'm looking to capture um, with this video is the client's got a pour um, in this slab here um, tomorrow. So what I've come to do today is to capture some video um, of just the, of the steel work going in place and the form work going around the outside of it, which they've mostly done now, um, as well as some work where they're putting in a pump station and putting in some rings. So um, that's what I'm looking to, to uh, capture today. So without further ado, let's get on with this video. So just as a bit of a tip, um, when you're if you're looking to do this sort of photography, um, obviously you need permission to get on the site first. That's that's an absolute must. Don't ever go on a construction site without having permission of the company or the principal contractor that is running the site. Um, that is massively important because you need an induction and you'll need certain um, cards like a CSCS card. It's very very handy. It's an industry uh, standard um, health and safety course that you need to do. It's a touchscreen course uh, run by the same people who actually run their driving licenses. Um, and you get a card um, which just says that you've, you've passed that course basically. So um, definitely do, don't go on a construction site without um, having permission first. But when you're on the site, um, what I always recommend is obviously you're here to do uh, photography and video for the company. You're not here to do it for the individuals that are actually working on the site. Now, of course, those guys um, are probably not used to being videoed and they're not used to having their photo taken in a professional standard like uh, obviously what I'm here to do today. So what you have to do is approach uh, that in a, in a delicate way. Just I always go out to the guys and just have a chat with them, ask them what they're doing, um, asking them what they're going to be doing next, how long they're going to be, uh, just a bit about them and a bit about the background, how they got into construction and that sort of thing. And just build up a tiny bit of a rapport with the guys, you know, in a, in a nice way. And then just sort of tell them what you're there to do. Say, look, you know, I'm here to just to do capture some video for the company, uh, capture some pictures for the company. Um, so you, you guys just carry on doing what you're doing. Make sure obviously all the safety stuff is right. Like they've got glasses on, gloves, hats, whatever the, the site induction tells you the guys need to have. Have, make sure that they're wearing that um, and obviously if they're not then as a safety point of view you know just be polite and just say that you know obviously I've had my safety induction and um, 
it said there that you need your glasses on do you mind if you just put your glasses on um you know because obviously this you're capturing this for the company um uh, you know and the guys generally are very very happy to do you know whatever whatever you you sort of ask them to do so just approach it nicely you know have a chat with them build up a little bit of a rapport with the guys um, and it goes a long way to then them feeling comfortable when you're around uh, taking their photo and taking the photo of what they're doing and video as well so just a bit of a tip there um, and certainly the way I approach it when I when I come to site. Okay, so uh, the guys have just finished the pour. As you can see down there, the concrete pump, which is just there, is packing away. Uh, so it's on site, because uh, I get a good view from up here, and I've set up the Lumix on a tripod. Uh, it's doing a time lapse. So we're doing a time lapse now for about three hours, um, taking a shot every three minutes. So I'm really hoping that I get a good time lapse video out of this. Uh, but as you can see, the guys have finished the pour, and they're now just floating the concrete. Um, so we've probably got another few hours yet of doing that um, so I'm just gonna for the moment leave the S5 doing its thing and uh, hopefully fingers crossed we get a good video from it so yeah that's what we're up to at the moment Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I really enjoyed making it, and I do apologise for the photography uh, people out there that are used to my channel just purely being photography. Uh, what I wanted to do um, was to show you a bit of behind the scenes of what um, I do, sort of on a pro side of things. Um, I do shoot some portraits and bits and pieces. Uh, for sort of private clients on film um, using my 4x5 but that's very very rare I do that to be honest here and usually it's friends and family um, so I don't obviously show that on YouTube um, but what I did want to do is just to show you guys because um, I haven't done a Lumix S5 uh, video or S5 Mark II video in a long time and I wanted to show you guys what I do with it other than just film my um, sort of on location videos with my film photography so it, the video was a bit of a behind the scenes um, and I was just conscious that it was very very video orientated and I wanted to make sure that um, I added some photos in just so you can see the photos that I get on this when I do go and do paid work with this uh, camera. So I just wanted to talk about this camera a bit and I've had it a few months. Um, it's not going to be an in-depth review, there's plenty of uh, other videos online that do a way better job at me at, um, at reviewing stuff. So I just wanted to sort of talk about this and how I use it and what I'm finding good on a photography level. Obviously video wise it is more 
than I will ever need, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think I need the S5 Mark II X version of this, um, although I do like it with all the blacked out uh, lettering, I'm gonna be honest, that's uh, pretty sexy. Um, and I can't believe I just called a camera sexy, but it is pretty sexy. But anyway, I don't think I need the extra um, features that that camera brings. So for this camera, video wise, really, really good image stabilization. Brilliant. And what I want to do is just talk through now what, um, why I think that this would make a good camera if you're looking to do some professional work, especially construction work, uh, where you're in dusty environments, uh, dusty and wet environments. So I'm have to report that this camera is very, very rugged. It's water resistant, it's dust resistant, and I've had this thing in dust bowls on site. It's been rained on. It's had uh, sea water all over it from an on location video that I took. Um, and it is stood up to everything so far that it has, it, that I've thrown at it. And bar dropping it underwater, um, this has been more um, than I can ever hope for when it comes to being rugged. Um, it just feels rugged, you know, it's a nice sort of solid camera. And uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it for that sort of thing. The only one gripe that I've got with this camera that I wish it did have, and um, I hope that Lumix uh, in the future do add it, is it could just do with a shuttle curtain uh, behind, uh, actually on the body, just to protect the sensor when you're changing lenses. Because obviously, construction sites generally are dusty environments, so I have to sort of squirrel myself away somewhere uh, in, a, in a sort of a, a room that's fairly sterile to dust and then change the lens. If I try to change the lens on site, then um, I'm gonna end up with a sensor loaded dust. So it would be nice to have a shutter curtain on this to protect the sensor when you're changing the lens. So that is the only thing I would say, ruggedness wise, um, that I would change about this camera. Everything else, brilliant um, the other things then is just the image quality of this so I'm hoping you're enjoying the images that sort of popping up every so often all taken on this camera and all um, delivered to a client uh, that has asked me to do it so um, the images this thing produces with this kit lens it came with the 20 20 to 60 Lumix lens I've also got the 100 to 400 Sigma lens both lenses are very, very sharp, and with coupled with this sort of 24 megapixel sensor, they deliver excellent results. I don't need anything more than 24 megapixels. I don't need a camera with 60 plus megapixels uh, to do construction photography. Um, the client is always very, very happy with everything I've delivered with this camera image quality wise. Um, what helps with this, I suppose, is that the sensor now has got face detect autofocus. And I know everybody sort of rushed to see what it was like as soon as this camera was released. Um, yeah, it does. It is definitely improved my hit rate uh, without a doubt, and um, it works very well. I've never had an issue with it. Touch wood. So um, yeah, sensor wise, very very good. Images very very good. I hope you're liking the ones that are, that are cycling through. Um, the other great thing, and there's a real selling point for construction photography wise with this camera, is the fact that it has got five axes of in-body stabilization, which is absolutely brilliant. And in my view, um, Panasonic. Um, probably Olympus, Olympus more so than Panasonic, are sort of leading the way when it comes to in-body stabilization. Um, the, the likes of Olympus have been doing it for a very, very long time in their Micro Four Thirds cameras, as well as um, as well as Panasonic with with their cameras. So this um, in-body stabilization is brilliant. That five-axis um, of stabilization you get gives you about six and a half stops of compensation, which means that. You know, in, in easy terms, if you're hand, uh, hand holding and shooting, if I had this um, lens set at 20 mil, I would be looking handheld on a traditional sort of camera with no in body stabilization of a shutter speed, no lower than one over 20th of a second. Um, obviously one over 60 of a second if you're shooting at 60 mil and so on and so forth. What it does mean is that you can come down six and a half stops from your one over 20th of a second when your hand when your hand hold it, which on a construction site is hugely important. I find that with my construction um, my construction work that I hardly ever use a tripod, and the reason why I hardly ever use a tripod is because you're dealing with, like I said in the video, you are there to capture moments on site. 
and the guys on site are not there, haven't asked you to photograph them, the company has asked you to photograph them. So it's important that they feel comfortable with you shooting them, which usually means that you have to be out of sight and you know you can be around where the action is but you're just looking to quickly hold the camera take a shot and then walk away or just sort of have a quick look take another one and then sort of mill about and see what else you can get and it's important that the guys don't really clock that that's what you're doing because uh, you don't want them to feel uncomfortable um or you don't want them to uh start sort of uh taking a piss out of you basically which is what you get now and again with a bit of banter which is perfectly fine, but it does happen now and again. So just to, you know, the more you can do this discreet, the better. And the fact that you're hand holding most of the time, as soon as you get a tripod out, uh, you're almost you're almost posing the scene. And it's very, very difficult then to guys to act naturally around you because they know, they're very aware that you've got a tripod there, the camera set up on it, and you're ready to take a shot. There is certain circumstances where you do uh, do a stage shot, but the majority of the time, all my work is sort of off the cuff, um, spur in a moment sort of shot um, where the action sort of happening so it's very important to stay mobile and leave your tripod at home in those situations now with the um, the fact that the image stabilization is so good on this means that low light is brilliant uh, it means I can keep the ISO lower for longer and shoot handheld for longer without having to raise the ISO. And obviously the more you raise the ISO, the more you introduce noise. And I'm well aware that the likes of Photoshop now and things like that have got an excellent AI uh, tool that will remove the majority of noise. Uh, but I like to try and get stuff right straight out of camera and do less um, processing afterwards. Although the shots you're seeing now have been very heavily processed because that's what the client wanted. Um, so it just means that when you're working early in the morning, late at night, or all night, um, you can get away with handheld shots a lot more now than what you used to be able to in the past. So that's why this camera, uh, in my view on that side of things, is very, very good. Now, I'm not sure what's happened um, with, with my camera, but I found that the, the screen is a flippy out one that rotates around. It used to auto rotate when I, moved the uh when i sort of twizzled this around it used to auto rotate the uh the image so it would, if it was upside down it would automatically flip it the right way around and then when you turn the screen around again it would automatically flip it the other way it stopped doing that for some reason i've checked in the settings it's all on i'm not quite sure what's gone on there but something's happened that it suddenly stopped doing that so i'll probably have to ask uh maybe lumix to uh to sort of help me out with that one but um anyway that's just that um so yeah in terms of sort of battery life on this it's not the best in the world there's definitely cameras out there that are a lot better i find that on the day of shooting so i might get on site for about seven half seven something like that and i'll be on site till about five half five maybe six o'clock at night some nights i will find that i'll definitely go through two batteries that's with a bit of filming and a bit of uh a bit of um uh, photography mixed in together uh, so i take three batteries with me um so i've always got like a spare backup almost um if i've got an issue uh so just bear that in mind if you're going to be using this on site uh, or out for long days of, of just any type of photography with a bit of a bit of filming involved that you are going to need a um you're going to need a couple of batteries at least three to last you a whole day um, but aside from that like i say this camera delivers in my view excellent results um it's a brilliant get a kit the price is great compared to uh, things like Canon and, and, and things like that. And really, I cannot be happier with this camera and my choice. I'm so glad that I made it. And um, yeah, I can definitely recommend it to you, you know, those of you out there that are looking to do some professional work uh, with your photography or video. Uh, this is a great hybrid camera to have without a doubt. So yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that video. Um, like I say, it's a little bit different to what I usually post. Um, if you liked it, please leave a like. Um, a subscription to the channel also would be really, really appreciated and it's just amazing. And please leave a comment below. I do read them and I do get back to people, although I do apologize for sometimes it takes me a few days to get back to you, but I always do. Um, and anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you guys are okay and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.